بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله continue on in our study of the nullifiers of Islam we reach the Anakid Asadis Anakid Asadis this is the the sixth uh, nullifier of Islam where Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab said من استهزأ بشيء من دين رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم كفر. Oh, he said, السادس من استهزأ بشيء من دين رسول الله رسوله رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أو ثوابه أو عقابه كفر. ودليل قوله تعالى قل أبالله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. محمد بن الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى said whoever ridicules something from the religion of the messenger or the punishments or rewards Allah has promised has disbelieved. The evidence for this is the saying of the Almighty say, it, is it Allah and His signs and His messenger that you are mocking? Make no excuse, you have disbelieved after you had believed. And this is in Surah at verse 65 and 66 through 66. Ahabatifillah it can't be stressed enough that we must be cautious about this naqid min nawaqid al-Islam. That we must be very careful about this nullifier of Islam because it's very easy to fall into. Uh, many of us, if not most of us, we like to joke and we enjoy laughing and, and so forth but it should never be at the expense of the deen. And the safest way to avoid this naqad is to avoid at all costs joking even around matters of the religion. And, and this is so that way you have no question when it comes to uh, this nullifier of Islam and, and that you don't fall into doubt and you don't fall into kufr without even having the intention of having, do, having done so. So, again, it can't be stressed enough because for those of us who live in Muslim lands and work around our brothers and sisters in Islam, sometimes it's very easy that you hear sometimes from your colleagues them joking about issues uh, in Islam, not in a, a way to attack Islam, and they're Muslim, but that they joke so much uh, about various issues that sometimes it has a resemblance uh, with falling into this naqad, with something which seeming as if they're almost ridiculing something from the deen or they're joking and it has something, some relationship with the religion. So in order to cut that off, is to avoid it by any and all cost. Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul, half of Allah Ta'ala, he said, Have a naqid bil qawl. Wa naqid al khamis, alladhi qabluhu kana naqidin itiqadiyin. Id huwa bugh shay min ma jaa bihi Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal bugh. من أعمال القلوب والاستهزاء والسخرية تكون بالقول يعني باللسان. شيخ محمد بزمول حفظ الله تعالى. He said that this nullifier is by statement. So when we're talking about making a ridicule in the religion, we're generally talking about 
that this ridiculing is something that takes place by a statement or on the tongue. And he said, and the previous naka that we mentioned, which was to hate something uh, which uh, the Sharia came with, or the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, has to do with something itqadiyya. That this has to do with a nullifier that relates to your creed, meaning that this is has to do with belief, uh, a matter of the heart. Hatred is a matter of the heart. Bugd, shay fi dinillah, this has to do with the heart. So having hatred or detesting something from the religion, this has to do with the heart. But when we are talking about uh, the uh, making fun or ridiculing something from religion, that this refers to what? This refers to generally uh, something on the tongue. So not necessarily in the heart because the person doesn't intend to, perhaps they don't intend to ridicule uh, the religion or make a joke at the expense of the deen, but it is, this takes place on their tongue even without their intention to do so. And he says that al-bugd, or this hatred, is, an, is a matter of the heart. Well, istihza, or ridiculing, or to make fun of something, well, sukhriya, uh, that this has to do with uh, a statement of the tongue. So to ridicule something is to belittle it or make fun of it. And this is the opposite of praising or exalting something which is how the believer glorifies and views Allah and his verses in the Quran, in the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and his Sunnah. It, uh, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, said regarding the, the above verse uh, that uh, that is a proof from the text which shows that ridiculing Allah and his verses and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is disbelief. Ibn al-Jawzi said, this illustrates that being serious or joking by showing signs of disbelief is the same. Uh, Imam Sa'di uh, stated, ridiculing Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is disbelief that removes one from the fold of Islam. This is because the foundation of Islam is, uh, is built upon exalting Allah, His religion, his prophets, and to mock something from that contradicts this principle. Uh, and to negate this is from the greatest of those things which nullifies uh, one's faith. So this shows us the seriousness and how the scholars of Islam uh, viewed this, uh, this Sharia uh, principle and derive this Sharia principle directly from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Qul, uh, say, is it Allah and His signs and His messenger that you were mocking? Make no excuse, you have disbelieved after you had belief. The reason this verse was revealed was because a group of Muslims were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, during the campaign of Tabuk and a man from amongst them made a comment uh, in jest meaning as a joke belittling the Prophet and the companions in the gathering there was a companion from amongst the Ansar uh, who heard the comments and accused the man of lying the Ansari went to the Prophet ﷺ to tell him what had transpired, what had taken place, uh, and what had, had been said, and found that Allah had already revealed the matter to the Prophet ﷺ. The man tried to seek pardon from the Prophet ﷺ by saying they were only joking and using language that travels, travelers use to pass the time. The Prophet ﷺ continued to ride his camel and recited the above verse and the man kept hanging upon the Prophet ﷺ's camel begging his pardon. Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan Ta'ala states, the ones who the verse was revealed about were Muslims and not hypocrites. This is proven by the statement of the Almighty that you have disbelieved after you had faith. This is evidence that the one who ridicules Allah 
or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam or what they brought from the revelation has become an apostate after believing in Islam. So this is very, very important because those companions or those individuals, they were traveling together. And when you travel, and you can only imagine what it's like to travel in the desert and especially traveling on a riding beast like a camel uh, in the desert for some time, that you need, uh, that you're going to communicate and, and joke and, 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 and so forth to pass the time. If you've ever been camping, if you've ever uh, going on hikes, even long hikes or any kind of journey, a lot of times you, you need the time to relax and to uh, let your hair down, so to speak. So these individuals were doing so, but they did so in a manner that you, you wouldn't think was a big deal, some of the statements that they made. But however, these statements were a kind of ridiculing of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions. So this was brought to the Messenger, but the ayat, the verse had already been revealed about them. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, say, is it Allah and His signs and the Messenger that you were mocking? Make no excuse you have disbelieved after you had belief. As Shaykh Salah bin Fuzan uh, indicated that these were not hypocrites because they believed in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but because they ridiculed something which should only be exalted which is the religion of, uh, of Allah which is the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala making ta'zim of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala you should never belittle uh, your Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or the duties that are um, or the signs <coughs> of, of, uh, of worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala anything from the Sharia because it shows that it's a very serious ma matter and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says make no excuse, uh, excuse you have disbelieved after you held belief so these people they believed they were not hypocrites but they fell into the major kufr that took them out of the fold of Islam and one of them he felt so sorrow so much sorrow he was hanging on the camel of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam crying you know we were just uh, joking we were just joking and the Prophet ﷺ kept going forward. Can you imagine that being with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and him making an car of you? You know, uh, him uh, being, uh, you know, not accepting your excuse? SubhanAllah. That is a, a very serious uh, a matter and it shows us how serious this naqad is and that we have to be cautious with our tongues. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that one of the, uh, the one who can safeguard his private parts and his tongue, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can guarantee, uh, guarantees that they are inhabit, will inhabit paradise. Letting us know that you can fall into very serious sins, of course through your private parts, by committing zina, by committing adultery, by masturbating, what have you and that you could fall into serious sins with your tongue by ridiculing the religion, fall into disbelief, by backbiting and having namima, you know, carrying slander uh, about people and cursing people unjustly or making takfir of people or making tabdi of people without the right to do so. That uh, all of these are serious sins and they can lead you to the hellfire. So that's why it's so serious, the sins of the tongue. And this is actually can actually is one of the one of the um of Islam, one of the things that nullifies your faith, and that comes through the tongue by ridiculing the religion. Some of the ways people fall into the nullifier of faith, or this nullifier of faith, number one, making fun of the signs of the religion. For example, the beard or the hijab. Uh, so, for example, a person might ridicule a Muslim man who has a long beard by saying it resembles the beard of a goat. Or ask a person like, why is that woman wearing such a big tent? Or other statements which ridicule things that Allah and the Prophet ﷺ commanded the Muslims to follow or do. This is open disbelief because these are commandments and signs of the religion. However, the scholars say there are details pertaining to this matter. Uh, if a person were to ridicule a Muslim related to his person or his characteristics, 
uh, uh, not his religion and his beard is from his personal characteristics then this is from the major sins because he has ridiculed his brother from the believers uh, it has been narrated that a people should not ridicule another people the second way is making fun of a lost religion and the wearing of the beard in general then this is apostasy so the point being is that it's very serious and that we should avoid ridiculing people that should be the shahid is avoid ridiculing people so that way you're not wondering did I fall into something that nullified my Islam or did I just fall into a major sin these are not the kind of things that you want to be reflecting on and thinking about with regards to yourself the point is is to avoid those sins entirely and avoid making fun of people regardless whether Muslim or non-Muslim but especially especially uh, the believers and the signs of Islam avoid at all cost and may Allah forgive us of our many many sins and our casualness with our tongues I mean you know what I mean so it's imperative to highlight the seriousness of ridiculing anything related to Islam and that a person can become a disbeliever for joking or jesting relating to the religion uh, and they are not excused by being ignorant as the verse illustrates the individuals referred to were believers and then disbelieve although they were ignorant of the matter and had they been aware of the gravity of mocking the religion they would have never committed such a sin so this shows us it's a lesson for us for Ahli Iman to take heed to take heed and, and be warned about and that is to be very cautious uh, with our tongues and especially about the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ridiculing anything from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many many sins wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam